Lamborghini has gone 100% electric with the new Lamborghini Lanzador. So what we're going to do in this video is have a look at this design. Because if there's one company that can make a crossover SUV and even a coupe SUV look pretty good, it is Lamborghini. Porsche is up there too, but I think this looks really cool. It definitely has uh, the Lamborghini uh, design DNA. I have a hair in my eyeball. Sorry about that. I think I got it. Now, let's have a look at this article, first of all, from Top Gear uh, about this new Lamborghini Lanzador. It's a four-seater, 1,350 horsepower Ultra GT, part SUV, part Super Saloon, and it launches in 2022. Now, they say that this is a concept, but they're not fooling anybody here. This is obviously the almost exact production version that we're going to see from Lamborghini when it comes out in 2028. Uh, it's, it's lacking some side mirrors here. And, you know, there is this saying that car designers hate side mirrors uh, because it's just a part that needs to be on the car that doesn't suit the car. But I think without side mirrors, it looks naked. There is something missing here. I want to have something stick out on the doors to, to kind of complete the design. It looks uh, it looks weird without it, but this has probably 50 cameras in it uh, to replace the, the side mirrors. So the Lanzador is something entirely new, says Lamborghini. An Ultra GT designed to draw a link between the Urus and the other supercars of Lamborghini. It's locked in a concrete preview of the production vehicle, we're told. Here it says Top Gear, so it is in fact pretty much the production version, and that is, uh, in my opinion, a good thing. It'll have two e-motors, one on each, uh, each axle, and produces over a megawatt of power. So it's over, so it is 1,350 horsepower. We have rear wheel steering, self-leveling air suspension, and a new generation high-performance battery, which also ensures a long range. And we're not sure exactly what the range is gonna be for this uh, Lanzador, but Lamborghini themselves says that 300 miles today is standard, so we could expect it to be 400 miles or something like that in five years. So it's a, it's a long wait for this almost production ready looking car. It's weird that it comes out in 2028. I wonder what they have to work on uh, for that long before the release. There are more sensors and actuaries than ever working overtime and talking to each other to ensure fine control of the car's handling. The system can vary torque between the front and the rear axles in milliseconds. This is a, it's gonna be very interesting to see or, or hear uh, reviews of what this car is like to drive because the one thing that is a big problem with pretty much every single EV is that they all drive pretty much the same. They have different noises and stuff like that but the driving experience in general feels very very much alike. It doesn't matter what brand it is so I hope Lamborghini figures out something to make this feel a little different. Uh, you have 23 inch wheels which i think look absolutely stunning i love lamborghini's wheels these days active aero is cleverly sm smuggled away under the surface at both at both ends boosting downforce in quick corners and now the interior is looking really cool i really like the interior here because we're going to talk more about the details in, in a minute so it is a skeletal y-shaped center console splits driver and passenger with fresh air underneath and a pilot's unit rotary control for the air con and the infotainment on top and of course being a 2023 concept car everything is recycled material from the interior such as 3d printed recycled foam maroni wool sustainably tanned leather and so on and this is not Lambo's first 2 plus 2 GT. They did have the Spada back in the day, but that was not a high sitting, you know, SUV coupe like we have here. But they have done this type of, sort of this type of package back in the day. Whatever Lamborghini is up to, it's working. The Lanzador concept arrives hot on the heels of record financial results for Lamborghini in the first half of 2023 with 5,341 cars sold, which is up 5% since 2022 so Lamborghini definitely they do have money in their pockets to uh, experiment and ho hopefully come up with some internal combustion cool stuff in the near future as well so let's have a look at this design first of all Mitcha Borkert the uh, design director of uh, Lamborghini I love his sketches and the style of design that we have in in the design house of Lamborghini uh, that is led by uh, Mr. Borkert. Uh, so we have the uh, design sketches here, official design sketches from Lamborghini, and I want to show you the development from early 
pencil sketches, blue pencil up here, beautifully done, very sharp, crisp lines, confident uh, in, the, in the sketching itself, which I'm sure is expected if you're design boss of Lamborghini. You want to have a clear line weight, so you have a different line weight and shading is beautifully done in this sketch. The package though, when you look at this sketch, it's starting to look maybe a little bit too blobbish. But Lamborghini has solved that issue by adding a lot of beautiful chamfers in this design, which we're going to have a look at when we talk about the real thing in a second. Then we go down here, you can see the design DNA of Lamborghini and how it transformed into the Lanzador. We have the Sesto Elemento right here, which is one of the coolest concept cars I've ever seen, not just from Lamborghini, but pretty much from any car company. It's unfortunate they didn't put this into production. It was just a sick car, all carbon fiber, and it has a very aggressive styling with the black parts and the red accents on there. Then we have the Countach, the new Countach, and have a look at this roof line. So the, the, the design DNA, I talked about this in person when I reviewed the Huracan Evo, so go and check that out because it was a really fun review, and I got to show you all the lines in person of that Huracan Evo and the design identity of Lamborghini. But then we have this same roof line, which is one single continuous curvature that goes across the entire roof line into the front end, and we also have the baseline and, of course, the these um, angled wheel arches and all of this comes in into the new Lanzador here. We don't have exactly a, a sloping roof line that goes from a, in one single curvature like this. We have more of a hood here since this is, after all, a crossover SUV and we don't want to make it look too blobby. But have a look at this where we have the greenhouse sitting right in between, in the center between the wheel, uh, wheel uh, between the axles themselves. It's a very interesting uh, type of proportions and these are these type of proportions that you can have have when you're working with EVs since you don't have an engine to, to fit or a transmission. And here are some more uh, very cool sketches uh, talking about the design philosophy going into the Lanzador and what was taken from the previous one. Up here, for example, we have the Urus Performante. And then moving down to this beautiful piece of art, this panel of sketches. One detail that I love about this new uh, Lanzador is the rear end. And when we have a look at this in real life, uh, in the real photos, I mean, I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. It's such a cool rear end. I do like everything about this design. Even though it is a crossover SUV or, or a, a coupe SUV, I think the Lamborghini did a fantastic job implementing the design and language or DNA into this. And here we have the more rendered sketch here. How, however, th there are a couple of things. One thing in particular that I think they could have hammered in the design DNA a little bit more, and that is in the front end. So let's have a look. I'm going to show you what it is. I'm going to show you the change that I would like to see on the Lanzador. So here we have the actual car. And as you can see, looking at this car right here, it feels production ready. There's not a lot of things here that I feel is too concept-like. We don't have any door handles, as I can see, so maybe adding some door handles right here, for example, something like this. And I also would like to have some sort of mirrors in this car. They just have to be very small, it doesn't have to be too big, but some sort of mirrors to, complete, to, to finish off this design, because me personally, I think it looks naked without uh, the, the, the side mirrors. And then you can see the front end, very much inspired by two Lamborghinis, the Countach, first of all, with these headlights that are very slim and looking super aggressive and cool. And then you have the lower section with the bumper and the intakes. They're not intakes in this case, but these wings, for example, looking very much like the Lamborghini Urus. And one thing I do love that Lamborghini did here, they added an LED, first of all, right here looks cool. But they didn't cover this up and make it look like a weird EV without a face, without any facial features to it. Having this shape, I'm sure it's not going to be the most efficient, you know, uh, slipping through the air because we have all these angles on this car, but I don't care one bit about it. Can you imagine Lamborghini coming out with a bean shape uh, SUV EV? It would just completely ruin the design uh, DNA and the brand for Lamborghini. So I'm glad they stuck with their very sharp and chisel design, even if they're creating EVs. And that's where I want to see more Companies, companies go down that route. And here we have the side view. So let's have a look at these line flow, beautiful shoulder line cutting in over this beautiful 
a curvature that goes over the rear fenders and then we have this triangular shape we also have a very cool looking intake here i wonder if this is for maybe cooling the battery or something like that it looks very nice but here you can see just how far the greenhouse stretches with these ev proportions all the way back to this point so we have the greenhouse as i showed you in the sketch where the a pillar stops and the c pillar stops is right behind the the uh, the, the front axle and right in front of the rear axle so we have we're maximizing the capacity for the uh, for the interior here it does look a little weird i have to say that when you look at it like this because it feels like it should it should be cut off right here and then have this be uh, just body color and we also it feels again like we want to move the a pillar backwards just a little bit to have the typical you know lamborghini uh, internal combustion proportions but again, if you're gonna make an EV, you might as well take advantage of the um, opportunities you have when you're creating an EV, and that is to create as much interior space as possible. Now, there was one thing I wanna talk about here in the front end, and that is these lines here, typical Lamborghini DNA is to have these lines in the hood go from wide in the bottom to more uh, angled or, or narrow up top, but now they go straight up. I can show you that right here. So here you can see we have these two lines right here. If you look at pretty much any modern Lamborghini, they have the lines going from here and then cutting in, in this angle. So that's exactly what I wanted to do with this design. I think it would add a little bit more of DNA, the traditional Lamborghini DNA, and also add some more dynamic feeling to the hood itself. So I did that change right here. So you can see the uh, after, the before and after and I think that just looks more Lamborghini at least to me so looking at the rear view and this is one fantastic uh, design of a coupe SUV I never thought I would like uh, you know almost love a coupe SUV shape but I think from this three-quarter rear view angle is just a stunning looking design because we have this integration of the tail lights or, or the tail lights or the tail graphics we have the Lamborghini logo here in the middle but what I love about this is just how beautifully housed the tail lights are I do like this new design of the tail lights it looks pretty fresh we've seen the Y shape for a long time now going back to the facelifted Gallardo which I think was the first one or even the, the Murcielago if you look at the uh, the tail lights of a Murcielago they do still have the Y shape there so it's been around for a while maybe it's time to mix it up a little bit and I think this design right here it looks fantastic but the best thing about this rear end in addition to the stance I'm going to show you that in a second are these chamfers see this big chamfer up here and then it comes down in the opposite direction at the bottom making it feel like the taillights they sit deep within this beautiful chamfer housed both on top at the bottom it looks very nice and on top of that we do have these lines you can see that they're angled in this way in the rear so that's the exact same angle or more angles uh, that I wanted to have in the front end to have some connection with the rear as well and also as I said that that's the design language or DNA of Lamborghini these days and then we have this massive diffuser it looks a little empty here because something is missing I want to see two big bazooka tailpipes back here but since this is an EV even though it has 1300 horsepower we're not going to see any of that in this case but this is still a very aggressive diffuser down here at the at the back now I, I usually I don't throw in an image like this this from a straight rear view but just have a look at this design I mean how planted can you make an SUV look this is a a textbook example of how to plant your car properly I know that they put the Centenario into production and that had a similar stance to this where you have the rear wheels completely visible it's almost like an inverted jeep on jeeps you have this this ground clearance in the front end you want to remove the bumper and want to have a good of, uh, of approach angle as possible when you take your jeeps off road so a lot of people just remove them up the bumper and you can see the front wheels like this but in lumbo's case they do this on the rear and i think it's such a cool way to properly plant this car and make it look so sumo squatty that it's insane because we have the width of the of the tire we have this diffuser hanging down here in the middle and on top of that we have this gorgeous chamfer that we just talked about it looks fantastic in housing the graphics in the rear so overall a fantastic exterior design in my opinion to to make the, the best uh, the best of what you have you're gonna make a crossover SUV that is a coupe SUV that is also electric there's very hard 
if you want to take advantage of all the opportunities you have with a package like that to make it look nice but in that way in that regard I think Lamborghini did a good job then we have this crazy looking interior with this big panel in the middle stretching down yes we do have the the the, the lock or, or the the fold up thing here for the, the cover for the start button which is totally of course unnecessary and have a look at this thing not sure what is going on here this looks like some sort of halo weapon or something like that I don't don't know what all these buttons do but you do have some sort of okay button right here and I want to see these pedals make it into production pedals is often a forgotten piece when it comes to interior design and I think if you have pedals like this it just looks very cool you still have the Y shape in here so you have the branding of Lamborghini in the smallest details of the interior this centerpiece right here of the steering wheel looks very small and I think that is a trend that is coming in right now because Ferrari is doing the same thing with their wheels it feels like the centerpiece is getting smaller and smaller and fatter and fatter at the same time and then you have these paddles behind the steering wheel these are probably for the regen braking which uh, it has always been weird to me like why would you need paddles to control the region braking it just make it a button or something it just feels weird to have them be paddles but maybe that's what it is in this case I don't know they could have you know it could be something way cooler than region braking because it is after all Lamborghini then you have this housing for the gauge cluster which I think looks pretty nice at least we do have some sort of housing for it and it is not just you know a big flat screen TV right in front of you and then we have a another uh, display for the passenger side here looking fantastic as well I like these materials in here and I do think this is a, pr a good interior because as I've said so many times these days um, you know car, car companies are they're taking away the personalities of cars not just in the exterior but also in the interior and I think Lamborghini is doing the complete opposite they're just hammering in everything that is Lamborghini in both on the exterior and also right here in the interior with all these uh, design features that we have being proper Lamborghini so this is an EV and uh, I, I'm actually looking forward to this I'm not super excited about EVs because I haven't seen anything that may that, that's worth getting excited about it was cool when they first came out you know uh, electric cars with a uh, thousand horsepower but now that I've driven uh, quite a few of them they all as I said they all kind of feel the same so I'm excited to see what this is all about but we're gonna have to wait five years it's gonna be interesting to see what exactly they have to work on for five years when they have the concept like this looking almost production ready.